Let's play a little game. This is called Pick That Color. What color would you say this front square is in each of these pictures? This part. And you know that this is an optical illusion. I have set you up for failure here because it's all the same color. It's just this brown color that is, if I sample this here, it's this kind of desaturated yellow color. Now what's happening here is that your eye is playing tricks on you. Color relativity is something that is really difficult to get because your eye wants to tell you information. I can look at this and say, in this one he's wearing a green shirt, in this one he's wearing a gold kind of shirt, and this one he's wearing a red shirt, but they're all exactly the same color, just the shadowed part. I did this intentionally to try to trick your brain to think in a blue situation, that color is going to look very orange. In a green situation, it's going to look very red, and in a red situation, it's gonna look very green. This is crazy. How do we work with this? How do we adjust ourselves to this? This obviously is in the red zones. All this stuff is in the red zones, but if I was painting this, like I could get the color temperature, I could shift from yellow to orange to red, I get that. But this green over here, that's green, right? That is definitely green. So if I select that, wait a minute, look over here, when I selected that color, it's orange. Wait, what? This is orange too. Everything that I picked that's green is actually orange. This whole image, if I just kind of click and hold and move around it, it's all reds and oranges all the way through. The only time that I can get two actual colors that look like greens or blues is if I come way up here into the sky and at some point it's gonna shift around towards the blues. It's so subtle, it's really grays. This is clearly blue. And yes, the water down here is blue, but this color here, that's gotta be green. Wait a minute. Hey! It's yellow orange again. What? And if this is a thing that happens with our eyes because it's over top of blue, we mistake it for being more green than it really is. How about this green up here? That's definitely gotta be green. Like I could pick green as a color. No, it's just yellow. So any of this stuff is all in the yellow tones. Now, if I were to look at this color here by itself, I would probably say it's green, but if I look at it scientifically, this is more of a yellow. All right, this image from the show Arcane, it's all these warm tones, lots and lots of warm tones and warm light, but clearly right up here, what color is this? It's another warm tone, it's another yellow, but it is a desaturated yellow. This is the power of gray, is that you can have a homogeneous color theme in art, we would choose a limited palette to be able to make this very believable, but to our eyes, this looks blue to me, but when I select it, it's just gray. But gray compared to all the other warm colors around it will feel blue. This is a really tricky thing that will take a while to get used to. So as you are making these color studies, give your best at trying to find the colors, and then we're gonna try a new technique for how to pick those colors. It's going to be very important if you go on to the intermediate class that I have. We will utilize this very heavily in being able to make very believable light situations because light has limits. Okay, let's follow this too. You know it's going to trick you. It's going to do the same thing to go, well, the greens are very yellow. How about this tree? The whole tree, that's got to be green, right? Nope, it's still yellow. All right, this mountain in the background, that has to be blue. Nope, it's still yellow. In fact, everything on this image stays in that range. If I just kind of click and hold and move around, everything is in this range from orange to yellow and nothing else. Until I get right here, right onto this back mountain, there is some purple in here. And up here in the sky, well, even up here in the sky, it's still, it's kind of hopping around. It's grays, but it makes a very beautiful combination. I don't need those strong colors. So. Let's do a little bit of painting to show this. There's this beautiful painting here called Early Morning by an artist called Alexandra Jacob, or Jakob. And I can see, and I'm gonna do a quick little study here. I started by finding colors of the sky and I can see a color temperature shift from lighter desaturated yellow down into these oranges. But if I look over here and say, what color is this? My eye wants to say that this color is purple. So if I come and say it is a desaturated purple and start painting this, whoa, that looks really purple. Okay, how about over here? This has gotta be green. So if I make this green and paint green up here, 
this just looks horrible. So I'm going to undo, undo, and try a new method here. Because the light is ambient and soft and so much warmth in it, I'm going to go ahead and pick, and I hold down my option key while I'm on my brush, and it's going to pick the color of the sky. But instead of going towards what I think I see, I'm going to do the same thing that I've observed in all of those photos. I'm going to stay in a limited palette and just kind of shift around the wheel a little bit. I'm going to lean a little bit. So I can say, all right, if I want something that looks purple, why don't I desaturate and shift it a little bit more towards red and now paint? Look at that. This now looks like a purplish color because color relativity, this looks purple compared to all the orange around it. Now let's say I want to shift and get these greens over here. All I have to do is shift a little bit more towards yellow and now that feels green and I can desaturate and darken this and look how green and minty this feels even though it's still in these warm tones. It's because I've desaturated and I've limited my palette, I can pick these colors a little bit more accurately. This is a, an, yet again, another thing that really improved my own artwork dramatically as I was doing early studies, once I started to realize what's actually happening. Try to look at this and understand color temperature and color relativity, and then if you get stuck, go to the original painting, you go ahead and select this color. Look at that. This color is not green, it's orange. Orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, everything in here. The things that look purple are actually orange. The things that look green are yellow yellow, 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 orange, yellow, orange, everywhere through this painting. Even this green down in the bottom over here, if I select this, it's yellow and it's on the orange side of yellow too. It's just desaturated. So to my eye, this looks like green. Well, this, the boat itself, the shadow of the boat itself actually does lean towards green. So the greenest thing I see in here, but green down here, that's kind of an orangey yellow. All right, these two things are really important and really awesome to start to observe in the world. There's so much more we can learn about painting light. And my course, Painting Light 101, will teach you all the basics you need to paint anything you see and how to observe light in the world around you. There are over 40 lessons with assignments and bonus imagination exercises. I also have an advanced course for students who want to paint more from their imagination. Check all that out at proco.com slash vickery.